Hi there. So for this video, we're going to be looking at bird reproduction in terms of the breeding systems that some birds have and the way that their offspring function. So one of the first things that we want to look at here are the mating systems that are in play. So all organisms, including birds, survive when they are successful at mating and creating offspring to help ensure that they pass their genetic traits. This is going all the way back to the basics that we talked about with um, adaptation and evolutionary change. Again, in order for a species to survive and potentially adapt, they have to be able to have offspring and pass on genetic traits. Birds have different combinations of female and male reproductive partners, and these are known as mating systems. And we'll go over some of the specific ones that we see in some birds. Many birds also engage in same-sex relationships. They just cannot create offspring independently. So again, um, it's not uncommon to see male-male pairings or female-female pairings in birds, but we will focus a little bit more on the reproductive end just because we're looking at chick rearing itself. So one of the first systems that we look at here um, is a monogamous um, breeding system. So in monogamy, one female and one male exclusively mate together, or two same-sex adults in, in the case of um, two birds that are joined in that way. This is very common in birds. Monogamous pairings are the most common type of breeding arrangement in birds. Um, you hear the term pair bonding kind of used a lot in situations like these because the two birds that do stick around together will um, usually maintain that for either an entire breeding season or in some cases even for life. You've probably heard of birds breeding for life and there are at least some species that do do this. Whenever you have birds that are in a monogamous pairing, they may only lay a few eggs or just a single egg. Chicks have a pretty good chance of survival because typically both parents will help with raising them, including with incubation of the eggs, so making sure that they stay warm, and feeding of these offspring whenever they are born. Another system that we look at is a polyandrous system. So poly in this case meaning many, androus referring to males. So again, this is a system with multiple males. In polyandry, one female and two or more males exclusively mate together. This system is pretty rare in birds overall. And when you see individuals of these species, there's usually, again, that sexual dimorphism that we talk about. In this case, the females are usually larger than the males by comparison. Whenever we see these systems, it may involve a female maintaining a large territory with several males or a female moving from one paired relationship to different ones within a mating system. So again, they may either have lots of different males in one territory that they're constantly checking up on, or they may just have little punctuated events with the males that they're interacting with to breed. Females in these relationships usually lay many eggs, usually too many for a single male to handle. So again, if they were paired, just two of them, it would be overwhelming for the male. When the offspring do finally hatch, the males often raise the chicks alone. Usually in these cases, the chicks are what we call precocial, which we'll get into a little bit later in this video. But essentially this means that they require less care. Then the other system that we look at is one that would be polygynous. So again, poly meaning many, gynous referring to females. So in polygyny, one male and two or more females exclusively mate together. This is another system that's rare in birds. And in these cases, the males are usually larger than the females in terms of the sexual dimorphism. This could involve a male who maintains a very large territory with females choosing between males based on the resources available in the territory. So basically, if one male's territory has lots of sources of food, the female knows that there's probably a pretty good chance that her, her and her offspring will survive in that area. So they will choose to be with that male over other males and their territory. This system is designed to allow females that invest more resources in sex cells to have to create few eggs, while males that invest less resources in sex cells can still create lots of sperm. So again, if we think about the relative size of these types of sex cells, eggs in birds are pretty darn big, um, especially if we think about something like a chicken egg, which is so large we can easily see it with the naked eye. Compare that again to sperm, very tiny sex cells. So it doesn't require much for males to create lots and lots of sperm, but it does take a lot of resources for females to create eggs. You would think that this system would be more common in birds, but actually 
a lot of it seems to point to the fact that, um, again, the monogamous pairs give a better chance for their offspring just because both of them are typically involved in the raising of the chick. Not always, but in a lot of cases. In the case of polygynous birds, the females often raise chicks on their own without any help from the male. So when we talk about paternal care in general, we've started to kind of touch on that here a little bit. For almost all young birds, some level of parental care is required. There are very few exceptions to that. Chicks may be cared for by a single parent, two parents, or multiple family members. Again, this just depends on the species. Sometimes birds may take care of offspring that are not genetically their own. So it's not uncommon for birds, whether or not they are in a monogamous pairing or if they're in one of the polygynous or polyandrous systems, to breed with multiple members of the opposite sex to where some of the babies may not be necessarily associated with the parent that's taking care of them. In extreme cases, there are birds that will take care of offspring from another species, and this is known as brood parasitism. And again, if you're looking at this on Classroom, this video kind of helps to explain um, brood parasitism a little bit. Again, basically a bird outside of another bird species will lay an egg in the nest, and eventually that baby will be cared for by the parent birds to that nest of a totally different species. Very fascinating system in nature. Offspring need different care depending on whether or not they are altricial or precocious. So let's look at those in a little more detail. So here are some examples of altricial chicks. Altricial chicks need more parental care. They hatch with closed eyes and little or no down. So again, when we're looking at these animals, it's kind of like when we see newborn mammals, it's, uh, in some cases at least, like dogs and cats. Um, again, the eyes being completely closed and the covering on their bodies being pretty minimal compared to when they're older and they have full feathers in this case. They cannot leave the nest, at least until they have matured significantly, and they need to be fed by the parents while they're still developing. All of the passeriforms, again, when we're talking about bird orders, these, this is the order that's all perching birds, have altricial young. Then on the other end of the scale, we see precocial chicks. Precocial chicks need less parental care. They hatch with eyes open and they have down already on their bodies. So you can see here, they already have a covering on their bodies to help keep them um, either warm or be able to help thermoregulate to keep their bodies a little bit cooler if they need to. Again, they are prepared for the open world. They tend to leave the nest within two days. They can already walk and sometimes swim, like when we're looking at ducklings, for example. Um, pretty early on. And then certain groups of birds, the megapodes, hatch already able to fly. So if we look here at this brush turkey, different from the turkeys that we think of in terms of the turkeys that we typically eat, but these are birds that actually have no parental care whatsoever, and when they have hatched, they're actually already able to fly. Many precocial chicks still follow parents around to learn more about gathering food. They tend to mimic the parents that they have imprinted upon and they'll learn how to feed based on what they see their parents do. So finally, this video here at the end talks about the scale of altricial and precocial natures in chicks. There are levels of variance between it. There are some chicks that kind of hedge the line between altricial and precocial, or they need slightly more or slightly less care than another bird. So this video kind of helps to explain that a little bit more, as well as the reasons why birds opt for these two different strategies. So think about why would um, some birds opt for having precocial chicks and why would some birds opt for having altricial chicks when the parents want to just not have to take care of them well again this gets a little bit into some of the details of that it mostly has to do with brain development but there are some other pieces to it as well so again i hope that this video helped to explain a little bit of what we're looking at in terms of bird reproduction in terms of the ways that males and females pair off for reproduction, or in some cases more than pair off, and how their young need to be cared for.